Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm going to be talking about episode 24 from season 5, The Go-Getter. If you're enjoying these segments, please do hit like and subscribe. At the beginning of the episode, John Boy is trying to write in his office uh, there, the shed that he's taken over for his newspaper, and he's distracted by uh, the family members outside who are trying to get Jim Bob's car started. They're pushing his car along, trying to help him get it jump started. And John Boy's very aggravated that he can't have quiet to focus on writing. And it just reminded me of all the circumstances under which I had to find a way to write when I was working with a theater company and had deadlines and just had no choice. And you just, I just had to learn to deal with it. So uh, I'm surprised John Boy wasn't more used to being able to focus under any conditions. But I think he was frustrated because his last chapter just wasn't coming to him. So I think it was more about that than anything else. In selling ads for the Blue Ridge Chronicle, uh, Ben comes in contact a lot with Darlene Jarvis at uh, her father's used car lot. And he is fancies himself in love with Darlene. So any excuse to go by there and, and uh, engage with her. Darlene offers to drive Ben back home and borrows uh, this blue Chevy from her father's car lot. And when she is dropping Ben off, they stop and they have a kiss in the front of the car and Mary Ellen sees this. Uh, now, I thought it was interesting when, when I first walk into the shot, I'm holding something, looks like maybe a rake or something like that. And yet then they go back to Ben and Darlene and immediately come back to me and I'm standing there and I'm no longer holding this. Well, it, it looks like I maybe put it aside, leaned it against the barn, but you never saw that happen. So it looks almost like, whoa, where did, where did that go? And those are the types of things that you have to make decisions about in editing because it distracted me to go, wasn't I just holding something? Uh, whereas, you know, maybe they just didn't want to have to take the extra time to see me put that aside because of what it would do with the timing of the scene. Absolutely love this exchange between me and Eric. One of my favorite scenes between us. Well, hey. Oh, our secret, huh? Our secret. You, you know how the brothers and sisters can be about that, and, and I say, yeah. Well, you know how the guys are. You won't tell Kurt, will you? Not unless I talk in my sleep. And he says, you do talk in your sleep. And then I reply, it's okay, Kurt doesn't listen in his sleep. Good. Thanks. So I just thought that was a really fun exchange. I noted at the end of this dinner sequence that uh, Jim, Bob, and Elizabeth ask if they can take their dessert and go sit and listen to the radio because they want to hear Charlie McCarthy. And I always love those references back uh, to Edgar Bergen and having had a chance to work with him. Uh, in the homecoming. On deadline to get the newspaper out, uh, John Boy's pushing things along and trying to get everything done and Ben appears to be busy working and then we find out that he's been making a paperweight with uh, for Darlene with her name on it and then he drops some of it into the printing press and he could have damaged the printing press and John Boy is, is just livid. He, he can't believe that Ben just wasted an hour of work time making this paperweight and, and Ben is says, well, I, I can't help it. I'm in love. And, and so this begins to create a bit of a riff between John Boy and Ben because John Boy feels Ben isn't really getting the work done. John Boy and Ben's argument escalates and Ben says, you know, I really don't need this job and I could go work for Jarvis anytime he'd hire me and, and maybe I will. And so ultimately it's like, John Boy says, well, then you, you just go do that. And, and Ben says, well, I will. So uh, there is a definite split there. In watching Richard working the printing press as he's busy trying to get the paper out by himself, uh, I just flashed on the fact that clearly Richard had to learn how to work this printing press in order to uh, look accurate in doing this. So that, that type of thing happened as actors where like the boys having to work the sawmill and things like that, that we often had to just get like a, a five minute tutorial on how to do something for me, putting on 
a blood pressure cuff or, or different medical things because they were required in a scene. So somebody just showed you how it was done and then you had to do it like you were an expert at it. The subplot in this episode is that Sarah Griffin, played by actress Lynn Carlin, has returned and has her eye on Epp. And she would like nothing better than to marry Epp. And Olivia thinks that's a great idea because she really likes Sarah and thinks that the two of them, Sarah and Epp, would be great together and would love to have Sarah in the community. So uh, they have um, gone to Rockfish to shop so that uh, Sarah can have an opportunity to bump into Epp and have a chat with him. Then we flip-flop over to where Ben is now, has gotten himself a job at, at Jarvis's used car lot and uh, he is busy getting, uh, he's on a trial. Mr. Jarvis has said he'll put him on a trial basis. Then we go back over to a scene uh, where Olivia is trying to get John to agree to nudge Epp um, because Epp isn't making a move and Sarah's only there for a few days and, and can John somehow push Epp a bit. And John's like, I'm not going to push Epp. Epp moves at his own pace. And that's the way it is. And Olivia's kind of frustrated with that. We're back over at the car lot where uh, Ben has um, a customer, a Mr. Schmerdeke Shmer or Schmerdy? Schmerdy. Schmerdy. <laughs> Mr. Um, Arnie Schmerdy. Mr. Schmerdy. I don't know how Eric ever said that. Eric really struggled with certain words. So saying something like that might have been very tricky for him. And, and he even said sometimes he felt like the writers had some fun at his expense by giving him these really difficult things to say. But he had to say his name over and over and did a great job. Mr. Shimmerty, Mr. Shimmerty, Mr. Shimmerty. This, uh, this character is uh, looking for a car, a truck actually. He's in need of a new truck. And so Ben sells him this old truck that where the upholstery's all gone and everything, but he's saying, well, you know, where do you want to put your money? In the 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 upholstery or in the in the, the vehicle? And so he ends up selling the vehicle. Um, and then later on, when he comes home and he's bragging about it, John says, that old truck that used to belong to so-and-so, well, you did tell him about all the issues. And Ben sort of says, well, no, he didn't ask. And we can tell that none of the other family members are very pleased with Ben for... Uh, selling someone something that he knew had issues without sharing that information. In Rockfish, we see Epp going about his uh, daily duties as sheriff, and he is helping tie the shoelaces of a little boy, Fester. And this little boy is played by Jeff Kotler, Cammy Kotler's brother. So another case of, uh, of Jeff being uh, having a little small role in an episode of The Waltons, um, and he was just too adorable. John is talking with Epp, and and we see this um, lady, this, this woman, who quite often was um, a background extra on our show, and we have highlighted her a number of times. I still, I wish I remembered her name. I'm so sorry. But here she is yet again with another townsperson, and they are shamelessly sitting there hoping to eavesdrop on the conversation between Epp and John and they disappoint them and um, go inside where John does bluntly say, Sarah wants you to ask her to marry you. And Epp just sort of fumbles around and doesn't really answer the question, but it's it's just a very cute scene. There's no use me beating around the bush, Epp. Sarah's got her eye on you, Epp. She wants you to ask her to marry you. But, uh... At Ike's store, Mary Ellen is there and Mrs. Bremer comes in and she's talking about how her feet hurt and Mary Ellen says, well, you know, Kurt would tell you to stay off your feet. And she, she says, I can't, I run a boarding house. No way I can stay off my feet. And she had walked over there because how else is she gonna get there? And Mary Ellen suggests perhaps she buy a car and that Ben is working over at Jarvis's and perhaps Mrs. Brimmer should consider that. So Mrs. Brimmer does, she goes over to see Ben and Ben initially starts showing her this really cute little coupe. But Mr. Jarvis calls him inside and says, you know, we can sell that coupe any day and it would be good if you could 
perhaps point her in another direction. But Ben says, you know, she's a family friend. I want to make sure that she gets a good car. And, he, and, and Jarvis basically bribes Ben and says there's extra money in it, extra commission in it for him if he can perhaps get her to buy this sedan. So Ben goes back out and he says, oh, Mr. Jarvis had another idea. And so he starts showing her this bigger sedan and um, does a great sales pitch on her. And ultimately Mrs. Bremer does buy the sedan despite knowing, Ben knowing that there are potential mechanical issues with it. Ben comes home once again, bragging about how he's sold all these vehicles and made all this money. And he has a new straw hat, which uh, a really cute moment where John tries it on and, and sort of models it, which you know was Ralph at his most adorable. <laughs> ben goes back outside and is talking with Jim Bob and, and just really is puts down Jim Bob's car and what he's doing and why is he messing with this piece of junk that, you know, that'll never be anything but a piece of junk. And Jim Bob says, well, when it's done, I'll have a car. He says, yeah, but it'll always be a piece of junk. And he really hurts Jim Bob's feelings because he's just so full of himself and, and what he considers to be his superior success. A really sweet scene back in Rockfish with, um, as Epp sits outside the sheriff station, and he looks across to two, two kids who've come up on a horse and the boy, who in this case is Eric Scott's brother, Dana, uh, goes into the ice cream shop, came, comes out with two ice creams, gives one to the girl who's on the horse, and then feeds the other one to the horse. And then um, Epp gives him a leg back up onto, um, onto the horse and off they go. So just a sweet moment there. Olivia goes over to Mrs. Brimmer's to invite Sarah to dinner. She's gonna invite Sarah and Epp to dinner in hopes that that will forward their potential romance. Uh, and she finds out from Mrs. Brimmer that the car only ran for one day and then it stopped and she doesn't have the money to fix it. So back at the house, the family is all getting on Ben about the fact that Mrs. Brimmer's car isn't working and, and Mr. Jarvis won't fix it. And Ben's like, it's not my fault. And uh, But they do feel that Ben is somewhat to blame for having sold her a vehicle without telling her everything about it and that he knew was a potential lemon. Sarah and Epp do come to dinner and then they go to see a movie. It's very awkward at dinner because they're trying to get the conversation going and Epp just isn't really engaging. And so it's just awkward for all of them. Then they go to the movies and um, Epp ushers everyone in. So it turns out that uh, Olivia and Sarah are sitting together and then John and Epp are sitting and, and Olivia is saying to John, this is stupid. They should be sitting together. And John's like, well, he's the host because he gets free tickets to the movies. And then we see that Ben is also there with Darlene. Um, interesting point was they went to see the movie Naughty Marietta. You see the poster outside the movie house. This is the same poster and movie that we saw in the episode Spring Fever, when Jim Bob and Ben took dates, took each other's dates to see a movie. And uh, so perhaps this was just a poster that was in the Warner Brothers prop stock and so easy to use and and perhaps they forgot that this was the same movie poster that they used once before and then they showed cartoons at the beginning and I sort of made me wonder if this was cartoons that had been produced by Warner Brothers because Warner Brothers did produce quite a number of cartoons as well so perhaps something else from the Warner Brothers film stock. On the way home, Epp drops Sarah off first and then takes John and Olivia back. And when uh, John and Olivia exit the car, Olivia says that it was silly that they he should have dropped them off first and then taken Sarah home. So Olivia feels like she has completely failed in trying to help Sarah um, forward her relationship with Epp. But then we see that Epp goes back and taps on Sarah's door to visit with her. After the family having jumped on Ben about the situation with Mrs. Brimmer's car, he goes to talk to John Boy about it and basically tells him Mr. Jarvis won't fix it. And you know he doesn't have any money left because he spent all of the money from his commissions on Darlene. So John Boy's not a whole lot of help because this is, this is a mess that Ben made for himself. Next thing we know, we see Ben towing Mrs. 
Brimmer's car <laughs> via uh, Blue. Blue is helping tow the car and Aaron's steering for them. And, and so Ben has decided that he is going to try to fix Mrs. Brimmer's car for her. Olivia goes by to say goodbye to Sarah, who she knows is leaving. And, and we end up finding out that Sarah and Epp are indeed going to be getting married. So a happy ending on that front. As Ben struggles to try to fix Mrs. Brimmer's car, others are kind of uh, having some fun at his expense. Ben is under the vehicle, he's trying to do something, and he ends up dumping basically what's supposed to be all the oil onto his face. And I'm sure it was not oil, but who knows, chocolate syrup, something like that, that ended up all over him. During the night, Ben wakes up and he, he looks around and he hears some sort of a sound and he notices that Jim Bob is not in his bed. He goes to the window and he looks out and Jim Bob is working on Mrs. Brimmer's car. So despite the fact that Jim Bob was telling Ben he was doing it all wrong and giving him a hard time and how mean Ben had been to Jim Bob, Jim Bob can't help but want to help Mrs. Brimmer and so he kind of takes charge and Ben goes over to talk to Jim Bob and say thank you. And John Boy, who's been up working late, comes out and sees the two of them. And basically, uh, Jim Bob gets Ben to help him and the two of them are going to fix Mrs. Brimmer's car. So a sweet ending and a happy ending all the way around. Once again, we had some wonderful guest stars. Of course, the uh, character of Darlene Jarvis in this case was played by Melody Thomas, now Melody Thomas Scott of um, Young and the Restless fame, uh, but she did a few episodes of the Waltons, at least one or two, um, as Darlene Jarvis, and I always liked Melody. I had worked with her very early in my career on an episode of, I think, the Tammy Grimes show, uh, so uh, it was fun to cross paths with her again. And then Mr. Jarvis was played by actor Lou Brown, who did four episodes of The Waltons, a couple of them as Mr. Jarvis. Then he was in The Deed in season one as a surveyor, Samuel Tinker, and The Attack in season seven as Ed Whipple. He also did an episode of Little House on the Prairie, did tons of Westerns, including 21 episodes of Gunsmoke, 18 episodes of FBI, and 12 episodes of The Virginian. So quite an extensive resume there. Don Kiefer, who played the uh, the gentleman who wanted to buy a truck, Arnie Shimerdy, he was in the original Broadway production of Death of a Salesman, and then was a founding member of the New York Actors Studio, uh, which made me wonder if in his um, theater days, if perhaps he had crossed paths with Ralph Waite when Ralph was in New York doing theater and things like that. Who knows? I never had a chance to ask Ralph about that, and I don't remember... I wasn't there when they were both on set, and I don't know if they were both on set at the same time, but um, I think there was a lot of those sorts of connections over the years. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. I'll be back with more Behind the Scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.